Hello, welcome to another Clube Tech Tech Tip. In today's Tech Tip, we're going to add something to our controller to make the car go slower. Why do we want to make our car go slower? Well, sometimes making it go slower actually makes it go faster because it becomes easier to drive. Sometimes motors are just too powerful for the car. They could be vibrating all over the place. They could have too much torque. Um, they could just be simply too fast in a straight line and they could take off on the track. So by adding things to your controller to actually tame that motor to make that car slightly slower can make it easier to drive overall. Luckily, there's a big space in this box here for just this thing. So let's get on with it. So if you watch my last video, you'll have seen that we added this blast relay or this full power relay into the controller. And we left this space here for something else. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up on the screen just here. You can watch that. And as I say, make sure you do watch the other videos that I've got as well on maintaining your controller properly and checking it out. Again, I'll put a link up on the screen uh, very shortly to follow up with those videos because there's no point doing any of this if your controller is not working properly in the first place. So what are we going to add to our controller to make the car go slower? Well, in the slot car world, generally these things are called chokes. Now, there's different types of choke that you can add to a car. It's not really choke as in electrical choke, you know, as the, the true sense of the electronical, you know. It's not really a choke in the true sense of the word with electronics, but in the slot car world, we call them chokes anyway. And there's different chokes you can add. You can add an inductive choke, you can add a resistive choke, or you could add a sort of voltage dropping choke. Probably the simplest, simplest sort of choke you can add is a resistive choke. And that's what we're going to do with this controller here because there's space enough in the box to do it. So in order to add a resistive choke, you're going to need some resistors. So these are two power resistors. You can see that they are 25 watt resistors. They're both 25 watt resistors. So they've got quite a good handling capacity and good heat capacity as well. This one's been used before and it's been trimmed off to fit in a box of a, uh, another controller. But I've soldered them both together end to end. So I've got two resistors in series. Now these resistance values are quite good values for the types of motor that this controller is going to be used for. So this is 0.05 of an ohm and this is 0.02 of an ohm. And obviously together you'll get 0.07 of an ohm. If you were going to be using motors that don't draw very much current, then you may need resistors with a larger ohm value. You might even have to go up to a resistor value that might be one ohm or half an ohm even um, for some lower powered type motors before you'll notice the difference. But these resistors here will actually make a small difference to the power of the car and you will definitely notice it on the track for running things like Group 12 motors and strap motors. To be honest, you'd even notice it with running FK motors like the Hawk 7s, etc. So this is a fairly easy thing to fit to your controller. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But before I start soldering everything together, you may have noticed that in a previous video, I drilled two holes in this box for another two switches. So again, they're all prepared properly for a two toggle switches like that. I've also cleared this area in the box here that's a suitable space for these two resistors. You can see that they fit inside the box here and they don't interfere with anything, they don't get in the way. So I'm going to drill out where these two screws are going to go into here and I'm going to tap the little holes so I can put two screws in there to hold this resistor down nice and tightly in the box. As I say, gluing won't work because I'm expecting these resistors to get quite a little bit warm when they're actually being used uh, in a race. So I want to make sure they're held firmly down into the box. So I've drilled and tapped these holes to an M3 thread. They go th right through into this heat sink. You can see that's that one hole comes through there and the other hole comes through there. So they're tapped all the way through, so they're nice and secure. See, I've just had to remove this one brake wire that was soldered onto the potentiometry there just to clear me some space to tap them. And I'm gonna fit the resistors in place. I'm going to use some of this heat transfer compound as well and I'm going to use this little 
bent bit of piano art you might have seen featured in previous videos i've done tires and everything with this sort of thing it's quite a handy tool to have just a little bit of bent piano art here that you can hold the top so i'm going to put some heat transfer compound on the bottom of these resistors like that spread it over the surface you don't need loads just a little bit spread all over and it'll help when the resistors get warm it'll help spread that heat to the box itself and the heat sink so i'm going to carry on spreading that over and then i'm going to screw them down into the box a few moments later so that's screwed down nice and tightly in the box ideally i would have liked to have had another connector for this one another fixing for this one but i didn't have another resistor that actually had the little tabs left on it but hopefully by screwing this one down tight and the way i've sold them together this one's pushed down quite tight onto the box anyway hopefully it will transfer enough heat um, if that gets hotter so how am i going to wire these in so that i can use these as chokes well the choke is going to run in this white wire here so i was dealing with the white wire before when i did the relay at the moment I put this little link in here from the relay to the emitter on the transistor and this is the one this in between this bit of wire here is where i'm going to be putting these chokes so i'm going to desolder it here again and i'm going to put a little switch in that's going to allow me to switch off the choke or switch on the choke it helps if i have the right switch in my hand this is the type of switch i need to switch on the choke and off the choke and i'm going to put that in the box i've also got this other type of switch which is an on off on so it's got a position there at the top it's got a central position where the middle uh, connection is not connected to anything at all and then it's got a, another connector there which connects the middle to the top so we've got in that position it's the middle connected to the bottom in that position it's the middle connected to nothing and in that position it's the middle connected to the top so this is the switch that i'm going to be using to switch in one resistor, the other resistor, or both resistors. So you've got three levels of choke. So let's have a look at the circuit I'm going to use, and here it is. <clears throat> so I'm going to switch these two resistors in independently or both together. So I've mounted the blue switch in here, and the blue switch is going to be this initial choke switch here. So in one position, I can bypass the choke totally. So when I have the white wire coming into the middle part of the switch, and then I switch the switch and then it got white wire will go straight out and it will go straight back to the emitter on the transistor there and it won't go through these resistors at all however if I were to switch the switch into the other position then I'm going to be switching it so it needs to connect to one end of the resistor chain so it's going to be down here right down the bottom here so the bottom of this switch is going to connect to, the, to this resistor here it's also going to connect to the bottom of this switch here and I've bent a little pin on the switch already so that when this switch sits in there like that all the bottoms of the switches are going to be connected together and connected to the bottom of that 0.02 ohm resistor and then the middle of this switch here which is on off on switch the middle of it is connected to nothing And then finally, the end of the two resistors here, the other end of the 0.05 resistor, will be connected again to the emitter, directly to the emitter on the transistor. And then what that does is that allows me to, when I switch the choke on, I've got two positions. So in the position that I've drawn it here, what would happen is it would come through the 0.02 ohm resistor and it would bypass the 0.5 because it could get straight out and go out through that wire. If I switched it to the central position, then the middle bit here is not connected to either side of the switch. So the electricity would have to run all the way around, all the way through both resistors before it could get back out again. And then if I switch the switch to the bottom position here, then in effect, I can come through here. I'm gonna bypass the 0.2 because it's gonna jump out there. and have to go through the 0.5 and then back to there. So the three positions of this switch here give me three different chokes that I can actually select when I'm driving. So my resistors are screwed down. I've put the switches in and you can see that I've connected the bottoms of the switches together 
and to the end of that 0.02 ohm resistor. So let's see how that compares to the circuit. So you can see the bottom of the blue switch is the choke on or off switch. So that connects to the bottom of the three-way switch or the on off on switch. And the bottom of that connects to the resistor here. So they're all connected together. And I'll hold them side by side and you can see then what we've got. So my next wire that I've got to do, I can do another couple probably. The white in is going to come from the plug here. So this is the plug end, this bit here. It comes all the way in here and comes up to my relay. So I need to connect that wire there to the middle of the blue switch. And then I also need to connect the other end of the 0.02 resistor to the middle of the red switch. So I'm going to do those two things next and then I'll be back again. A little longer than a few minutes later. So we have the middle position of this switch just here. The middle position connected to the middle of the two resistors. And then we also have this position and the middle position here connected to the white in. So looking side by side with the circuit diagram here, I can see that the top of my three position switch and the top of the choke on off switch. So that's these two connections here and here. They need to in effect be connected together. And then they're also going to be connected to the white out, which is the emitter here. So I can do that. I can have one wire coming across here and coming down to that one there. And then I also need to connect the end of the resistor here. that's not connected to anything also to the emitter here. So there's another two wires to install. So I'm going to cut a little bit of fancy wire to go across here and I'll show you before I solder it in. A few moments later. So here we go. I've cut myself a fancy bit of wire. So that will sit across there. And then this end will also head down there towards the emitter. A little longer than a few minutes later. So there we have it. Choke done. We've got the end of that resistor there. The top of that resistor in effect is here. Connected to white out, which is the emitter here. And then we've got... Again, this one here connected to the top of this switch, which is the choke off. So when I have the blue switch in this position here, it's connecting this white wire that's coming in directly to the white wire that goes to the emitter. So there's no chokes, nothing connected at all. If I were to then switch the blue switch into that position, that's the choke on. And then I've got three choices of choke. So when my choke is turned on with the blue switch in that position there, then you can see that we've got the middle wire that comes in, comes out through that very bottom wire there. So the middle wire that comes in, comes out through the bottom wire here. It then goes to this red switch here. So it, if it goes, if the red switch is in that position, which is pushed up there, it's connecting the bottom of the switch there to the middle. So it's bypassing this gold resistor totally then coming back through there and then back to the emitter. If I switch the red switch into the opposite position, then we will see that the white wire coming in, which is connected to the bottom of the resistor here, go, has to go through that resistor there. But then it can then jump out and get back to the middle of the switch and connect to the top and come back to the emitter here. But if I put the switch in the middle, the choke switch in the middle, then the white wire that comes in that connects to the bottom of this resistor here comes through that resistor. Can't get out there. That's not connected to anything. So it has to go through that resistor as well and then back to the emitter. So that's both resistors then in series. So let's give it a test and see if we can see any significant difference with a motor attached. So let's see if we can see a difference when we're testing. So I've just put a little cable tie around the controller here to hold it on full power. But I'm not actually going to test it at full power. I'm only going to test this motor at 6 volts because I don't particularly want to damage my motor running it flat out. It's fairly worn out anyway. It needs a com true and a refurbish. But you should be able to see the difference here. I've connected my power supply, say at about 5, 6 volts, to the plug already. So my red wire is going to the white wire here into the controller. The black wire is going to the brake. And in effect, the car is going to bridge the difference. The black wire coming back from the controller is coming to the negative of the plug or the neutral and then going back to here through the car. So that would be the rails of your track normally or the braid on your track. 
and this is the car now connected above it. So if I were to connect the car to this now, the motor will then run and you can probably just about hear that. So that should be running without a choke. If I switch the choke on, the motor should slow down. And we've got to slow down the motor, you can hear a different tone. So that's the first level of choke, that's a 0 0.02 ohms. I'll switch this switch down right to the bottom and that's a 0 0.05. I think it's got, I've got it the other way around. I haven't really paid much attention. That's the 0 0.02. That's the 0 0.05. So that's slower still. And then the middle should be both of them. There we go. Okay, so you can hear the car running now. I'm about to switch the choke on and it should slow down. There we go. So we've got a slightly slower engine note. So that's the first level of choke. And if I switch this up, that's the second level of choke, so it's slowed down a bit. You can hear the, the tone has changed of the motor. And if I switch both resistors in, it goes even slower. So we've got another level of choke. Are the resistors getting warm? Not warm at 6 volts, there's no heat there at all. They will probably get a little bit warmer at 12 volts, and especially as the car's accelerating and decelerating, uh, and you're putting it under stress. So I hope you enjoyed that of how to fit a choke. Again, I've had the circuit diagram on the screen. There it is there. You can have a look at that while I'm talking and finishing off. Fairly simple, fairly neat job, but that gives you three levels of choke. Obviously, if you didn't want three levels of choke, you could probably do it much more simply just with a single switch and one resistor. But this gives you a good choice of different levels of choke for your car or resistive choke. I'd like to thank you for watching this video again. So we've maybe we've added a full power relay in the past. We've now added a choke system. What's next? Well, we might be coming to the anti-brake. So you'll have to stay watching for next time. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the big C that comes up just here. Have a look at my other videos. And we'll be back very soon for the next modification. Bye.